imagine that you are powerful beyond your wildest dreams. Your own unique and powerful soul is your very essence, leading you closer to the true source of beauty, magnificence, and wonder that is found deep within your being. Powerful Soul is about you. It's about helping you uncover the true nature of your soul. Once you understand the power of who you truly are, you will be unstoppable and you will begin to live your best life. This show is a tool to help you, once again, reclaim the power of your soul. No matter how hard I look, I'm still blind. It's not what you see, but what you find. Hello, powerful souls, and welcome to episode number 11. As always, I am so glad that you're here with me today. Today's episode is called The Power of of time. And we are going to be talking about how time influences us and what it means. I think it's a really cool subject. And um, before we get started in in dive into the actual podcast, I want to talk about my new format. So for those of you who are listening on a, a, pot, a Spotify or Google podcast or Apple podcast, you can't see me, but I am now for the very first time going to begin recording these podcasts in a video format, and I will be putting them up on my YouTube channel, Lori Micah. And I'm really excited about this. It's a little bit different for me. I am literally out of the closet. Um, before, when I've done my podcast, I've always recorded them inside my closet because it has all the clothing wrapping around and it kind of dampers the sound. And it's just a perfect place to where it's really quiet and it's private. There's no interruptions, but um, I, I just figured you didn't want to look at all of my clothes. So here I am in my normal um, video recording little studio. This is my meditation room in my home. If you kind of see this design behind me, um, it's actually a little portal here. I'll show you. Sorry for the people who are listening, but I've got like a little portal and <laughs> it's just a fun part of my meditation, my meditation room. And when I do these podcasts, what I used to do is do them just in one fell swoop. I would have all these little notes on my phone. Um, they would be what I call buoys where you are jumping from one subject to another. So since we're doing this in a video format, I've got a little whiteboard behind my computer and it's just all new today. So um, I'm really excited though to talk about this episode about time and I want to share the story of how this idea came to me. So two days ago, I was waking up in the morning and you're, you know when you're kind of in that, like that twilight state, like you're not quite awake, but you're really not asleep anymore. All of a sudden, the idea to record a podcast about time popped into my head and I got up and recorded a note about it and then just kind of went on with my day. And then um, that same day, I was getting ready to um, go on a hike and I got in my car and I get signs all the time. You've heard me talk about all the signs that I get and I get a lot of license plate signs. And I looked over and there was a Jeep in front of me that had this license plate, killing time. And I thought, oh my gosh, like what are the chances that I'm going to get in my car and there's a license plate about time when I just this morning had an idea to record an episode about time. So anyway, that's where we are today. I'm also using a new microphone, which I think is going to be a little bit better sound quality than the ones I've been using before. This was a recommendation that I got from um, a face, uh, I'm sorry, YouTube group that records and talks about um, microphones and it's called Deity. And it's by V Lab is the name of the microphone. It's a little lapel microphone. It just kind of clips on and I really like it. The sound quality is excellent. If this is something that you can use in your life, I'll put a little link below and uh, you can connect with it there. I think it has like 4.8 reviews on, on Amazon. So it's pretty good. Okay. We're going to dive right in here to the subject of time. So uh, when I was doing my research, I came across a little joke and it was, what is the one thing that if is lost is never found? 
And the answer, of course, is time. And I thought, ah, oh, it's probably not true. What about like your virginity? <laughs> so it might apply to some other things out there, but it is kind of true. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty good thing to begin with. Um, so time, we're going to talk about time and um, Einstein. Einstein theory of relativity. Um, he mathematically proved through special relativity that time is relative to the perception of where you are in time and space. And time moves differently depending on where you are. And I think that there are a lot of differences between earthly time and time on the other side. And I'm going to share those perspectives about that. So let's talk about the earthly time first, because let's face it, we're here, we're living on this earth and we've got to deal with earth time. So um, a few years ago, um, it was my grandma's 80th birthday and we were sitting there talking and I asked her a question. I asked her uh, if she thought that time moved differently at her age of 80 than it had when she was younger. And I thought I actually knew the answer when I asked this question. I really thought she was going to say to me that time moved slowly because like she's retired and you now she was a pretty active 80 year old. She was involved in church and church choir and some volunteer activities. But I really thought she would say that time went very slowly for her because she had a lot of it and not as much things to fill her time. But I was really shocked by her answer. What she shared with me was that she felt that time moved much, much faster every single year that she aged. And she felt that the reason behind that is because your perspective is different in your 80s than it was when you were like eight years old. So the example that she was sharing with me was that in our life, in a calendar year, you have all of these different events that we anticipate, right? So we start off in January, it's New Year's, kick off the new year, then we move into Valentine's Day, and then Groundhog Day, and then pretty soon it's St. Patrick's Day and Easter, and then Memorial Day and 4th of July, and on and on. And so in a calendar year, we know what's coming up. Pretty much every month is marked by some type of a holiday. And it might be different for those of you who are listening to this who, who aren't in the U.S. I know holidays are different all over the world. And different religious holidays are different for different people, different months, right? But her point was that as you aged, you had gone through so many of these iterations in this yearly calendar of going around and round that as you got older, it seemed like the time actually went faster because you've experienced these so many times, it just started to click off like this. And time for her, she felt, moved much faster than the perspective of my time at my time in my, I was in my forties when we had this conversation. And, and I thought back and I thought, you know, I think you're really right about that. Think, I have two examples I, I can think of that, that maybe you can relate to. All right. So think back to like when you were a little kid and you had something really special coming up. Like I remember I would really anticipate and look forward to going to the amusement park. So we would have like the Six Flags Great America. And, you know, you would know weeks, maybe, maybe even a month in advance that you're going. And it felt like the time was so slow. Like it would take forever for that day to get here. Right. And then, you know, you'd have your day or, you know, when you were a little kid in the summer, it seemed like summer lasted forever. Like you have, summer was a long time, but now I feel like when it's summer, oh my gosh, like summer's here and it's gone and then it's fall. And it, she's right. The perspective greatly, greatly changes as, um, as your perspective changes. Another great example of this is going to a location, driving in your car somewhere, for the first time. I don't care if it's an hour away or if it's six hours away. If you notice, it takes, it seems like it takes like a long time to get somewhere the first time you go there. But then when you drive home, you're like, oh, wow, that was so fast driving home because your perspective changed. Now you know what to expect. You know where you're going to hit this town and when you're going to stop for gas and when you're going to stop and grab something to eat. And as you anticipate all of those little um, road reminders coming up, 
your perspective is different. And so time moves very differently also. So I think that she's really right. Like earth time, the perspective of it changes and ebbs and flows, and it just goes faster and faster the older we get. So geez, like if you live to be like a hundred years old, your year probably lasts like a second. And that kind of seg segment wags me into time on the other side. So as powerful souls, you know, we come here and we have this earthly experience, but really at the core of who we are as a soul, we are this amazingly vast, powerful, high vibrational being who exists on the other side. And for us, time does not exist, much like um, Einstein proved mathematically that time was very relative. So we are slowed down to have this earthly experience. Our vibration is much slower. And so time is slower for us. And this was explained to me through um, medium reading where the medium connected with Mark, my passed away loved one who I talk about all the time. So Mark was my greatest spiritual teacher. He comes through in every single reading I've ever had with any medium. And he likes to talk about different things. And sometimes I'll ask about different um, topics. And we talked about the subject of time and how time seems to him on the other side. And he explained it this way through the medium. He said, like, for him, he died and then he's on the other side. And for him, it's like he saw me yesterday and he's going to see me tomorrow. But for me, you know, he died in his 40s. If I live to be 80, I'm here, you know, almost 36 years without him. And he, for me, you know, that's a lot of, that's a, a lot of time to go by. But for a soul, the speck of time that we spend on this earth plane is very, very short. Um, it was explained that it's like we're on a two week vacation. So we're gone, like, you know, we've left all the people that we are connected to on the other side. And it's like, we're gone for two weeks, but to us, oh my gosh, you know, we're here for, you know, 80 years and it seems like a very long time. So time on the other side is very, very different. And I think that that's part of why the grieving process um, for the souls on the other side is different. They don't want us to be sad. They want us to continue enjoying our life here because for them, they feel like, oh, well, I'm just, I'm going to see you in a couple days. But for us, it just seems like it's a really long time before we see them again. The other way that time um, moves differently is in different situations, you know? So um, I think that when we have activities that we really enjoy, don't you feel like time moves super, super fast? Like they always say time flies when you're having fun. And I think there's a lot of truth to that because for sure, when you're having a good time, it seems like time goes way too fast. Like you're having a wonderful conversation with a friend and you're like, ah, oh, where'd the time go? Like, I wish this would last longer. Or you're at a really fun party and you're like, wow, you know, how did five hours go by when I'm dancing on the dance floor? And then you go to a different situation that maybe isn't quite so much fun. Like you have to attend some lecture that you really aren't very excited about. And you're like looking at your watch going, gosh, like when is this class going to be over? Or if you have a task to do that you don't particularly enjoy, like, you know, maybe cleaning the floors or, or cleaning the bathroom. And it just seems like it takes a long time. So definitely time moves in different situations. But I also think that time moves according to stress. So when we're in high stress situations, I think that time can almost stand still. If you've ever listened to anybody who talks about a near-death experience, they'll often describe their death scene of like drowning where they said that time stood still and they saw like every moment happening as if it was, it was its own, like, you know, minute of every second was like a minute long, or as somebody's in a car accident, it's almost like they can look around and have a different perspective. Because I think that when we start to leave our body and become closer to our soul's vibration, time doesn't exist there. Not like it does here. I think time is um, it's a product of being human so that we can have these experiences that feel like they are in this linear, you know, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. And so we can look back and look at something in the past and we can look forward to things in the future. But in reality, 
they say that time doesn't exist and everything is happening at once. And man, I think that that's such a difficult concept for a human mind to get behind and to grasp and kind of understand. I Maybe we're just not even meant to understand what that means in this human body. We're just meant to have our experience. And I think that one of the best practices of time and enjoying your time here on this earth is to be present because it's difficult to enjoy a moment when your mind is in the past or when your mind is in the future. Really the only thing that we have is the here and now and the moment that we're in. So um, we can focus on all of that. I have a really cool story of something that happened with my sister and I, and I'm sure that you could probably think of at least one explanation or one story like this in your own life. So I went to go visit my sister who lives in Kansas and we went out to breakfast and we sat there. We hadn't seen each other, I think, for a while. And unfortunately, that particular day I was there on a, a work on a business trip and I had I had meetings to go to later in the day, so I didn't have a lot of time to spend with her. I think we had about an hour and a half, which was still a nice amount of time. But the conversations and the depth of conversation that we went into, there was absolutely no way, and hey, I'm a fast talker, <laughs> but there was no way we could have covered the sheer volume of conversation and content that we talked about in a one and a half hour time period, we both remarked that it felt like time warped and it slowed down. And it seems like that time um, was like three hours worth of time when it really was only an hour and a half. We both commented and we talk about it to this day. This happened many years ago, but we both feel like we got in some kind of a time warp and time completely slowed down and it changed. And maybe you've had a really cool experience like that. And once you have an experience like that, it does change your perception of what time is and how time works. And, you know, that's just how it is. Um, I was also recently listening to this guy um, named Chris Fleming. He is a really amazing um, paranormal researcher. He does all these really cool shows like Paranormal Kids, Famous, Dead Famous. And he was talking at a near-death experience conference. And he said something in a way I've never heard anybody say before about time on the other side. He said that he's been shown by his spirit team that time is like a bird sitting on your shoulder and then it flies to the other side. That's how quick the time is on this earth when we're in a soul perception. It's like you're here and then you're back on the other side. It's pretty amazing. Okay, I'm gonna take my first little break here. I have something I wanna share with you that I think um, you'll really enjoy. I love to cook, I'm huge. I'm, I've always been cooking and baking and I really appreciate a good recipe. And as a Christmas gift several years ago, my dad got me this. It is Test Kitchen's Complete Cookbook. And it has all kinds of recipes, baking, cooking. But what I really love about it is they talk about the science behind a recipe. And they try several different iterations and versions of a recipe to try and figure out why a recipe tastes better and with a certain ingredient or um or, or something else. So for example, French toast. I love French toast. I think it's one of my favorite breakfasts. And if you've ever had French toast, you know, it's eggs and milk and maybe a little bit of vanilla and some cinnamon and you dip your bread in it and then you fry it in some butter or some shortening or some oil and then you serve it with syrup, right? Well, the test kitchen recipe actually has you take a piece of bread, dry it out, then dip it in a milk mixture that doesn't have any egg whites and it removed that sulfur kind of taste to the um, French toast that gave it kind of an eggy flavor. And oh my gosh, it was the best French toast I have ever, ever had. So I'll put a link below that where you can buy this on Amazon. I got this for my kids. Their version, their cookbook is way thicker than mine. Mine is 2001 to 2012. The new one is 2001 to 2020. So it's a giant cookbook worth the, I think, $40 that is on Amazon. So highly recommend. Okay. Back to time. 
So let's talk about how we can harness time because we do have a finite amount of time. And I think that there's a lot of uh, kind of cool sayings around time. Like we're always saying that we're running out of time. We're running short on time. We're out of time. Um, we talk about how we spend our time. So time is kind of that elusive thing. And it's that one commodity can, that can neither be bought nor sold. You have it and you use it. And once it's gone, you don't get it back. You just hopefully have more time coming up in your future. And the way to harness time is to really kind of be, I think, more aware of it. And we have 24 hours in a day, right? So we only have so many minutes and seconds in a day. And if we're spending eight hours sleeping, then that gives us about 16 hours of time. So have you ever been conscious about how we're spending our time? Um, I read that time is going faster now that our technology is advancing. And if you think about it, there are a lot of distractions that we have now that didn't used to exist. I mean, when I was growing up, I never had a cell phone. We were not connected to everybody where we could constantly be in connection. If you wanted to connect with somebody, you had to go find a phone that was connected to the wall, remember, like a landline, and you would have to call somebody. And if you weren't home, then you would miss a call. You wouldn't even know they called. And then, you know, technology advanced and answering machines happened. And now we have these devices that we carry with us that we, we can't even live without. I mean, I think I would be lost if I didn't have my phone. All of my information is in my phone now, right? But with the phone come a lot of applications that drag our attention to, you know, they're begging for our attention. So um, most of us probably have at least one social media account. Maybe you've got a Twitter, maybe you've got a Facebook, maybe you love Instagram, maybe you love Snapchat, maybe YouTube is your jive. You've got something that is begging for your attention and people are constantly posting content and you know you're curious and so during the day our phone if it's set on an alert it's constantly dinging ding 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 oh there's a text message oh there's a new email i better check check that out oh what's going on on facebook oh somebody posted this oh somebody replied to my comment i mean we have like a lot of distractions during the day that we didn't used to have and every time that we take our attention away from something that we're doing and we're distracted towards our social media and information on our phone, it sucks time out. And uh, I don't know how many of you have gotten to the end of the day where you're like, oh my gosh, like I didn't get done as much as I wanted to get done because you realize that we're constantly interrupted and distracted. And every time we're interrupted, that means we have to pull our attention away and then we have to come back to, oh, like, what was I doing? Sometimes you have to reread things. You have to get centered. You get, you know, back in the zone and you're working and then boom, there's another distraction or there's a phone call. So we have a lot of things that pull our attention away from us. And I think that there's a middle ground between planning every second of your day and not planning anything in your day. Like, I think that it's good to have those days where you don't have anything that you have on your to-do list, but really, if you're going to make the best use of your time, there does have to be a little bit of planning that goes into it. And I think that, you know, the power of what you can do in a day is a lot of times determined on how many distractions are taking you away from getting some of those things done that you want to get done. Uh, we also have a lot of distractions at night. I mean, it's sometimes it's nice to sit down and watch a mindless TV show or connect with a good documentary. I love to watch a good near-death experience video because that helps me raise my vibration. But I think that when we're not careful with what we do with our free time, pretty soon it's completely gone. I mean, we could get sucked in. I mean, how many of you have found a new show and then because it's on Netflix and there's an entire season of it, you binge watch it. And the next thing you know, like two nights are completely gone out of your week and you didn't get any of these other things done. So as a powerful soul, I think it's really important to be cognizant of your week and how much time you have. 
And I think it's also kind of cool to change the perception of what a week is. So for most of us, if we're working, you know, we think about our Monday through Friday as our work week. And then, you know, when, when Thursday's coming around, we kind of feel like, ah, I'm winding the week down. Like my week is coming to an end, but would you be surprised to hear that Thursday at 5 p.m. is actually just the midpoint of your week. From a time perspective, if you look at Monday 5 a.m. as the beginning of your work week, it's the beginning of your full seven-day week, your midpoint is 5 p.m. on Thursday. And how many of you are thinking 5 p.m. on Thursday, oh, thank God, tomorrow is Friday, my week is only over. It's not. It's only the halfway point. And this is a concept that I heard about through a a woman named Laura Van Vanderkam. And she does this whole thing about shifting your time perspective to understanding that Thursday at 5 p.m. is your midpoint, which means you have four more evenings, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, before your week is over. And I think that perspective is very powerful because it means that if you can realize that Thursday is not the end of your week, it's kind of only the midpoint, then maybe you can think about how you would achieve and accomplish some of these things that you want to bring into your life. So like, for example, for me, um, one of the things that I've been trying to bring into my life is this spiritual business. You know, I have my, my job, my nine to five job, and that would take a lot of my time. And then, you know, if I'm going to really in earnest work on building a spiritual business, like how do you do that? How do you find the time? But really you don't find the time, you make the time. And that's the huge distinction to be a powerful soul. You need to be completely aware of what time does, how it looks, how you're spending it, how you're wasting it. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that social media is a waste because I think that it's a great to be connected, but I think we have to be aware of where our distractions are and where they pull us out of being productive in the way that serves us and helps us to bring into our life, whatever we're trying to bring into our lives. Okay. I'm going to take my second little break here, and I want to talk to you about something related to time that I think is a really cool, fun tool that I found and I've been using this year. So I ordered these on Amazon. It's a little set of hourglasses, and there are four of them that come in the set. Um, There's a one minute and a two minute, a five minute and a three minute. And I use these in a lot of different ways. So um, I actually, one of my favorite ways to use this is for my workout. So um, I've talked about being in nature and I love that part of it, but I also do a stretching practice every day. And then three days a week, I do a little mini CrossFit workout in my house. And one of the exercises that I do is a plank. And in order to do the plank, I don't want to have my phone. I don't want to try and be setting my phone timer. It's just, it's too much. And so I take my little one minute timer, or if I'm feeling a little advanced, I might take my little two minute timer and I just turn it over. And then as soon as that time runs out, my plank time is done. I will admit that a minute seems like an awfully darn long time when you're doing a plank. I mean, especially when you're also watching this little hourglass, you're like, when is that sand going to run out? Not fast enough. (laughs) But anyway, I think that these are really great. I also like to keep the five minute timer um, in my bathroom because when I am getting ready in the morning and I've got to be somewhere, I usually have to meet somebody for hiking or maybe I've got a call I've got to be on. And I know I just have five minutes. Minutes, I set my little five minute timer. So it's just a little subtle reminder that I just only have a few minutes to finish something up. So I will put a link in the show notes um, below this so that you can connect to these little timers if they will help you manage your time a little bit better. Okay, so let's bring this all back the way that we always do to how time and you as a powerful soul can harness the time and think of time a little bit differently. So my big spiritual message of time is really that one of the lessons that I feel spirit has been trying to teach me over the last year is that everything is unfolding perfectly. Okay, like let that sink in for just a second. What if you knew, what if the truth was 
that everything in your life is unfolding perfectly. I'm talking about the beautiful, amazing, great things that you have in your life, but I'm also talking about those not so great things, the unsettling things that happen in your life. Some of the things are in your control, some of the things are not. But as powerful souls, we don't always remember the lessons that we've come here to learn. We don't always remember why we're here. And sometimes even those things that happen to us that aren't super pleasant, that are darn right sad and maybe frustrating and maddening, maybe even devastating, all have a purpose in our life that is in some way, shape or form helping us to learn a lesson, to grow, to become a better version of ourselves. And I think when we have the perspective of hindsight, time in the past to look back into, we can often look at some of those events that happened in our lives and look back at them and be, I don't know, thankful for them. So um, you've heard me say before that Mark's death for me in many ways was the worst thing that ever happened to me, but in a different way has been one of the best things that ever happened to me. It awakened my spiritual growth and journey. It brought me to a place where I was able to produce things that um, let me send amazing, powerful, positive energy into the world. And I think that that happens sometimes through our worst tragedies. We are elevated to a state um, of growth and beauty that we would not have been able to experience had we not had such a terrible experience to kind of propel us there. So um, the other thing about time unfolding perfectly is that um, I tend to be a more late person than an early person. And sometimes I'm running late, but I've grown to know over time, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful for somebody if I'm late. I do want to be respectful of people's times, but there are times when you are just running late. Shit happens, right? And you are running late. And I have been taught over and over again that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And I'll, I know that because of the way that synchronicities will happen in my life, where they're kind of like intertwined together in a way that show me that it's not just one thing, but it's several things coming together to show me that, that things are intertwined and unfolding just as they're supposed to. So for example, there have been times when I'm running late and I get in the car and I see a special license plate um, some, one time I saw one that said spirit led, or I'll see Mark's name on a license plate. And you think about like, you have to be exactly at a certain point in time with somebody else to see a license plate, right? Cause you're driving, they're driving. They had to get to that spot at the same time that you were. And I feel like those are not accidental uh, occurrences. They are, happen um, with a lot of synchronicity. I think we sometimes brush them off as coincidence, but I don't think that's what they are. And for me, when that happens, it's like, oh, I'm right where I'm supposed to be because you never know when you've been slowed down on purpose. Maybe you've been slowed down to miss being in an accident. Maybe you've been slowed down so that you can arrive just in the exact timing that you're supposed to be somewhere so that you'll get a special message or see something that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So I'm going to share two stories about how I have been shown by my spirit guides, my team on the other side, that um, I'm right where I'm supposed to be and things are unfolding perfectly. So both of these experiences happened to me in 2020. So the first one that happened was, um, it was a day that I was outside working in my garden, in my yard, and I got a text message telling me to go vote for the Catholic, um, whatever their, whatever their agenda was. And I thought, well, that's odd that I got a text like that. I'm not Catholic. I don't know why I was on that list, but I got this weird text message. And that text message led me to think of I don't know, Sinead O'Connor. I was reminded of back in the 80s when I was watching Saturday Night Live and Sinead O'Connor came on live TV and she was singing her song and all of a sudden she takes this picture of the Pope and she tears it in half and 
oh my gosh, like everybody was, was just dumbfounded. Like this was live TV. Like you don't tear a picture of the Pope up. And so anyway, I have this whole thought about this, this Catholic text brings me to this thought. Okay. So next, the next day I go on my hike and normally I hike with somebody else, but on this particular day, I was by myself. So I go on this hike and at the top of the mountain, instead of just like having my drink and turning around and coming back down, I wound up recording a couple of little short videos for my social media. And it took me a while to record these videos. And as I'm coming back, I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm running so far behind. Like, wow, wow. I'm just, I'm running so far behind. I I can't believe how far behind I'm running. Like, wow, I, I should have been home already. And I get in the car and I only have a 10 minute drive home. And I turn on the radio and 90s on nine was playing on XM radio. And within a minute of getting in the car, Mark McGrath on the 90s on 9 DJ begins talking about Prince and how Prince wrote this song that Sinead O'Connor uh, sang, and I think it was Nothing Compares to You. And then he, he references, remember back in the, the 80s when Sinead O'Connor tore up the picture of the Pope and it caused this big controversy on TV. I'm like, seriously? what are the chances that I had a random thought? I mean, it's like 2020 and I think about something that happened back in, and maybe it was 92 or something like that. Yeah, it's 92. What are the chances that something like this happened back in 1992 and I have a thought of it and I get in the car and the very next day, a radio program announces exactly what I'd been thinking about. And in order for me to kind of get this synchronicity, I had to have hiked the mountain and come down in that perfect timing. I only had a 10 minute window. The car radio had to be on that station in order to get that cool synchronicity. So that's one example. The next example happened with my daughter. I had driven to San Diego to go visit my daughter and we decided to take a three hour drive to go to Joshua Tree National Park to go hiking. And then we were going to come back and have dinner with friends of mine who were in San Diego. So we had this all planned out, right? And so we drive to Joshua Tree, it's three hours. And as we're getting close to Joshua Tree, the traffic in Palm Springs on Highway 10 was way backed up. And I thought, oh, I hope that traffic isn't there when we get done. So we plan our whole day accordingly so that we'll have three hours to get back in order to like have time to get dressed and go to dinner. And it's Sunday night, you know, restaurants close a little bit early. So we come out of Joshua Tree, we're right on time. We get on the highway and oh my gosh, it's still completely backed up. And we're sitting there and the GPS tells us we're going to be an hour delayed and now we're going to be an hour late getting back. And I freaked out in my mind and out loud because I had plans with other people. I had time planned to be back to have this dinner and now we have this hour delay. Now it's out of my control. I can't control the traffic in you know California on this particular night, but I was really annoyed. So my daughter and I are sitting in the car and we're listening to eighties on eight and a song comes on that I had already heard. It's like a program. They do it like a 1980s countdown. And I had already listened to it on my drive to, to San Diego. So the song came on, I didn't like, and I was going to change the radio station, but then my daughter's singing along. So I ask her if she wants to hear the song and she does. So I leave the station there. And the next song that comes on is a Shania Twain song. And I begin to have this conversation with my daughter. I love Shania Twain and I read her autobiography a few years ago. So I say to my daughter, Shania Twain was married to this guy named Mutt Lang. And he's a famous producer, music producer. And he actually produced the Def Leppard album Pyromania. And my daughter, of course, is a big 80s music fan. So she knows the album. She knows the songs and the band. And then I began to tell her about how Mutt Lang fell in love with Shania Twain's best friend and they had an affair and then Shania Twain found out about it. And it's, you know, it's devastating. Like it's your best friend, but they were couples friends together too. So Shania Twain begins to confide in her best friend's husband and the two of them form this special bond and Shania Twain winds up divorcing Mutt Lang 
and Mutt Lang marries her best friend, and Shania Twain falls in love with her best friend's husband, and they get married. And I'm talking about how crazy it must be for their children. Like they've swapped parents, <laughs> you know, mom is with, with best friends, you know, dad and dad is with best friends, you know, mom, it's crazy. So we just kind of laughed about the whole thing. So now I'm, I'm still annoyed though, in the car in for an extra hour and I'm, I'm driving home. As we get to San Diego, I drop my daughter off to get changed for the dinner And then I go back to where I am. And as I get in the car, I'm listening to 80s on 8. It's still on. And um, this is what the radio announcer said when I got in the car. I, I still can't believe this. Mark Goodman came on and said, It's kind of hard to believe that as huge as Def Leppard is, they have only one number one single in the 80s. And it was produced by Mutt Lang who liked the sound of this demo. And this is the demo that the band ultimately produced with Mutt Lang and it became their only number one hit. Okay. Like seriously, it's not like in my life, I talk about Mutt Lang at all. It's just, he's, I mean, when was the last time I even said his name? I don't know. I can't remember. So what are the chances that I not only mentioned Mutt Lang in a conversation to my daughter, but I also say, He's connected to Pyromania and Def Leppard. And then moments later, when I'm in my car at that very special time, I find out that, um, that, that he, he mentions that. So it's this cool synchronicity. And what it said to me, what it meant is that everything is unfolding perfectly and that we're right where we're supposed to be. And ultimately everything did work out perfectly because the people we were meeting to have dinner wound up seeing a movie. The movie ended in the perfect timing when I arrived at their house and everything really worked out. So if I could impart one message to you as a powerful soul that you picked up and embraced, it is to remember that everything is unfolding perfectly and you are literally and completely right where you are supposed to be. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Powerful Soul and learning a little bit more about time. And if you would like to connect with me, you can connect with me on my Instagram, my Facebook, and my YouTube channel, and my website at Lori Micah, and of course, through my Soul Heart Artwork artwork on my Facebook page, Soul Heart Art XO. So thank you, and I look forward to connecting again with you soon. Never forget that you are a powerful soul and the essence of you is pure spirit. You are a soul in a body, not a body with a soul. Part of your lesson here on this earth is to remember who you truly are. You are beautiful beyond measure and together we can change the world. Thank you and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon.